Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Today, I want to talk about the Bricks and its role in the world. I mean, the Bricks block now commands greater respect on the world stage than the US and the Western dominated blocks like the G7 and the EU. Now, analysts have attributed this respect uh, to the surge in the number of countries that are actually seeking membership to the Bricks block. Now, according to Anton Kobyakov, who's an advisor to President Putin and one of the organizers of the major St. Petersburg International Economic Summit, a total of 59 countries have expressed their interest and intention to join the groups of either the BRICS, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, or the Eurasian Economic Union, because they want to be part of these new formats that are creating a multipolar world. I mean, according to Kobyakov, <coughs> Russia and its partners established the BRICS, the SCO, and the EAEU, and now a majority of the Earth's inhabitants are part of these groups, and they represent 45% of the world's GDP, including three of the top four in GDP by purchasing power parity, which are China, India, and Russia. <clears throat> the number of countries expressing an interest in joining BRICS is now so large that the associates are going to be unable to take them all at one time. And it's not just about absorbing them, but allowing these countries to join directly and fully participate in the activities, Kobiakov said. Now, according to him, there's now going to be three levels being created, and these are a BRICS partner format. And this will be tested with the countries currently interested during Russia's chairmanship this year. Now, this new format, I understand, will facilitate gradual membership. And this will be, first you become a partner of the, the BRICS, then a candidate for membership, and then you apply for full membership. I mean, this year, Russia's chairing the BRICS organization, and it'll be holding the 16th annual summit in Kazan in October. In addition to the five founding members, which are Russia, Brazil, India, China, and South Africa, this year, the bloc now includes uh, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Ethiopia, Egypt, and Iran. I mean, the number of other countries that have expressed an interest in joining the bloc just keeps on growing. I mean, one of the most recent announcements was made by the Zimbabwean president, Emerson uh, Dambuzo Mangawaga, who discussed this issue with a meeting at Vladimir Putin uh, at the SPIEF conference. Now, according to him, uh, none of the BRICS members object to Zimbabwe's possible membership, and that he feels comfortable uh, in all of these countries. However, the approval of an application for membership is actually taken by consensus of all the participants in the community. I mean, those wishing to join uh, the BRICS is a large list, and they include Algeria, Bangladesh, Bahrain, Belarus, Bolivia, Cuba, Honduras, Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Kuwait, Morocco, Nigeria, Palestine, yeah, Palestine, Senegal, Thailand, Venezuela, and Vietnam. I mean, earlier this week, NATO member Turkey announced its interest in joining the BRICS. Ankara explained that his views of this intergovernmental organisation as a very good alternative to the European Union, which Turkey has been trying unsuccessfully to join for several decades. <clears throat> now, do watch the video I made earlier discussing Turkey and the, the membership of BRICS. Uh, it's worth watching. So we've certainly got a lot of comments anyway. So what are the attractions of the BRICS? Well, according to Vladimir Putin, the BRICS is going to introduce uh, the system on the use of national currencies and foreign trade payments, which will lead to the abandonment, or certainly uh, a lot of abandonment of the dollar, which is a very attractive alternative. In this independent payment system that will not be subject to political pressure, abuse, or external sanctions interference, sounds very good. Now, the Bolivian president, Luz Arque, who participated in the speech former, also said that the economies of the BRICS are challenging US hegemony. Now, according to the New Development Bank, or the BRICS Bank as it's known, by 2028, the BRICS countries will account for around 40% of global GDP, while the G7 share will drop to 27.8 and the EU's will be around 12%. <clears throat> the world order is evolving towards a more just and balanced state based on multipolarity and multilateralism, he said. Those who wish to join the BRICS are against outside interference in their internal state of affairs. Well, the countries of the Global South have had enough of interference in their internal politics by groups and NGOs funded by 
the US, EU, and they see membership of the BRICS as a level of protection and support against the malign influences of Western organizations that attempt to control them. <clears throat> they also see the leadership on the global stage of China, India, and Russia, and standing up for their rights uh, with other countries. And they like to see BRICS as a great partnership that looks to develop stable economic growth amongst the members. They also see the BRICS as a protective barrier to the actions of the United States, which is constantly undermining the system of international relations that really started back at the end of the 1990s. I mean, everybody's witnessed the military interventions that have happened in places like Serbia, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, and now the Ukraine. I mean, these inter interventions have caused concern and anxiety in many countries of the world. They're worried that the US or NATO troops could invade or that the US, EU and the NGOs could instigate color revolutions on them if they cross the policies of the US hegemon, has been attempted recently in Georgia over their foreign funding legislation, and obviously that also happened in the UK in 2014. I mean, BRICS is currently the only alternative to the G7, NATO and the European Union at the moment. And they've shown that they have a different agenda for the development of the world. I mean, these are closed clubs where you can only enter by giving up your sovereignty, particularly the EU. You need to be ready to do as you're told and follow the global internationally agreed rules set by the EU and the US to be allowed to join. And deviating from them can mean that you're castigated and maligned like the Hungarian leader Viktor Orban or Slovakia's Robert Fico in the EU. Now, the aims of the BRICS bloc is that things are done on a voluntary basis and in a pursuit of global economic integration, which is beneficial to all members, which is why the BRICS format commands so much respect, uh, much more than the Western blocs. However, in my opinion, the BRICS is going to find it difficult to expand indefinitely, as this is going to lead to many challenges. It's crucial for the group that they have a voice of every BRICS member being heard and taken into account and a consensus is reached. Now, that's not going to be possible, I think, with more than 20 to 25 members. It's also important that the BRICS doesn't become another ordinary talking shop, but actively works to change the current system that exists or offer alternatives, which is why the creation of the independent payment system through BRICS is so vitally important. I mean, the creation of this independent payment system by the BRICS will result in the emergence of a new economic era that will benefit the world, if it's, particularly if it's open to all those who want to join the BRICS or work with them on one of the three levels that I mentioned. I mean, technologically, this is possible, and I look forward to the big announcement that will happen in Kazan in October at the summit there. I mean, this BRICS system for trading and settlement of their own currencies will have a major impact on world trade. I mean, the dollar and SWIFT are not going to disappear overnight, but the power to control countries and destroy their economies will be gone. And the world will benefit from it in the years to come and lead to a much fairer and multipolar world. Well, thanks for watching and please like and subscribe. If you've enjoyed this video, you could help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. That will certainly fund me a little. Anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.